Hi there, my name is Will, and today I'm gonna to walk you through how to use the Kestra API. Kestra was designed with an API first approach, which means that you can actually control and configure a lot of Kestra using our API. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through a few different examples of how you can use the API to run flows, create flows, and a few other things around Kestra, and how to set up authentication to make sure this works for both open source and enterprise users. Now to start off with, inside of our documentation, we actually have API references for both the open source and the cloud and enterprise edition. When you click into these, you get an interactive reference here that tells you everything going on about the API. So here I can easily click in and see what parameters are required, request body, etc., etc. So we're gonna use this to help us out with the different categories. Now, as you can see here, there are a bunch of different categories here for the API, which will make things a little bit easier for us later. Later on. Now, it's worth noting that if you're using the open source edition with basic auth enabled, then you're gonna need to have a uh, basic auth in all of your requests with your username and password to be able to authenticate to Kestra. This is just to stop any bad actors from being able to make API requests to your Kestra server. If you're on the enterprise edition, you can also generate API tokens, especially if you're using an authentication method such as single sign-on or something similar to that. This just makes that a little bit easier where you can't really sign in via Google or Microsoft with your API request very easily. For our first example, I'm gonna walk you through how we can create a flow using the API. Now I'm gonna use both Postman and Curl to do this, so you can choose which one is best for you. Now to start with, we'll have a look at the API reference and we'll see here that the first one here, API slash V1 slash flows, which does say deprecated, but that's because it's deprecated for using a JSON body. Uh, now you have to use a YAML body, which makes sense because flows are in YAML. But what we can do here is simply create a flow, pass it a YAML body, and we'll be able to see that in Kestra. Inside of Kestra, I've got a bunch of different flows, but I'm gonna create a new one called created by API. Now, the best way to do this is let's go over to the terminal and make our request. Now here I've created my request in my terminal using curl. Now we wanna make a post request. We're gonna put the URL of our Kestra server in, which for me is localhost 8084. For most people, this will be 8080, but if you have this deployed with a domain, put that in instead. Slash API slash V1 slash flows. Now I want to add a header to say that the content type is gonna be application X YAML, because we're going to be adding our YAML. And then using the dash D argument here, we can add our body and our body here is similar simply our YAML. So here it's just a simple hello world example, but when I run this, we'll see that it returns a nice JSON here to tell us that it was successfully created. And now if I go back to Kestra and refresh the page, we'll see that we now have a created by API one that was just made, and we can have a little look to see this in action. Uh, and just like that, that's the flow that we were expecting. Very useful. Now we can do the same in Postman here by clicking raw for our body and selecting it as text. We're gonna put in simply here the flow, but to make sure that we get that correct application type, what we'll do is we'll go to our uh, headers here and we'll create a new header here of content type. And then we're going to simply put in the YAML one here like so. So now when we go here and if I just put this of Postman, so we get two different names. We'll see that when I make the request here, we get a response to basically say, this has been created. If I now go back to my flows, we'll see that we now have a new one called created by API Postman. Now here I've got a different flow example here. Now this one contains an input with a default value. If I execute this, it's simply going to just put my input here in a log message. And we can see that simply here when I type execute, we'll see it says hey in the logs. Now let's use the API to execute this, which means we can have external systems trigger our workflows. Now to do that, I want to be able to go back to my terminal so I can make another request. So here I'm simply just doing a post request and I've got in here execution slash the namespace that my flow is in and my flow ID. Now, when I press enter here, we'll see that it has executed and it gives us this good response body that tells us that the status is created, the execution ID and a little bit more information. Now, if we wanted to run this again, 
but instead by passing an input through, we can do that too by using the dash F argument. And before we do that, we can see that we were able to execute it here and we can see that it says, hey, but now we can do it again, but this time we can do it with an input of our choice. I'm going to execute this and here I'm setting our input greeting to hey there. So when I execute this, we'll see that now when I refresh this page, we'll get a new execution. I can go to logs and we can see that the input has successfully changed. So this is really useful if you've got an external system that you want to be able to trigger flows in Kestra and pass a bunch of inputs to get different responses. And here we can do the same thing inside of Postman where it gives us loads of information about the status of our flow and the execution ID and a link to the execution too so that we can go and view it. Very useful. And if we want to add an input, we can simply add it here as form data. So I'm going to put hello from Postman. So when I execute this and then we go back to Kestra, we can see here in the logs that it was able to get our input. Now let's say we've actually executed a flow. We've got the execution ID. Wouldn't it be pretty useful to be able to get more information about the execution, especially once it has maybe finished? Now we can use the executions API path to be able to make a request specifically for executions and get a load more information that we were getting from the starting them. So let me take this flow ID and what I'm going to do is now open my terminal and I'm going to simply add my next request in. So here it's doing a slash execution slash the execution ID. So when I run this, we get a really big JSON here, which is really hard to read inside of the terminal, but we can use Postman to help us visualize this. So here I've made the request in Postman. And as we can see, it's given us the history of the states of the execution. So we can see exactly when it was created, when it was running and when it succeeded. We can see it did all of that very, very quickly. We can also see outputs if those are generated and we'll look at an example of that in a minute. And we can also see uh, any inputs that were passed through and so on. So very, very insightful here. Now I'm gonna modify this flow a little bit here. So instead of having the input, instead it's now going to use this return type. And the key thing about that is when I execute this, you'll see that the return type will give us a similar looking message to the log but instead it generates it as an output. So now what we can do is when we fetch this execution ID from uh, the API, we'll be able to see an output inside of the response. So here, when I run this in the terminal, we'll be able to see in here that the output was successfully generated and we can see it right there in the middle. This is an output. We can do the same over in Postman as well, where if I just paste in our execution ID, we can see here that it does in fact get a nice output object of all of the different outputs generated. Something else that can be really helpful in Kestra is using the key value store. Now, typically you can use tasks in your workflow to add and to both add, set and delete values in your key value store. But maybe you've got some code that you're running in Kestra and you want that code itself to talk directly to the key value store, whether that it's fetching the data or it wants to add data itself to make your workflow stateful. Now, a good way to do that again is with the API. So to begin with, let's create a new key value pair inside of the store here, and then we can modify that and delete it. So here we're using a simple put request to be able to put a brand new key value pair here in to the key value store. And as you can see here, we are doing namespaces slash the namespace of the key value store we wanna use, KV for key value, and then the key of it. So we're gonna create a new one called my key, and we're gonna put that inside of the key value store. And when I execute this, we can see that now when I run the, now when I refresh it, we can see we do have that and I can see that my key is successfully there with the value hello world. Now, what if I wanna modify this? We can do that too by using that put request as long as we specify the key. I've got the exact same request, but instead I have a different body here. So when I run this and we refresh that page again, we'll see that it does now have a modified value. And we can run that same example in Postman to see a new modified value. So here in Postman, I've got a new body here that says this is from Postman in quotes. If I then send that and then we refresh the page, we can have a look inside of here and see that it has in fact modified the key value store. 
Now, if we want to be able to just simply access values from our key value store, we can do that with a simple get request here without any of the extra arguments. So here I'm able to see that we've got that Postman message in our key value store here by making that simple request. And we can see the same here in Postman where we've got the type of the value and the value itself. Now, another cool thing about namespaces is you can have files inside of them. We often refer to these as namespace files, and these can be useful for being able to interact with your work workflows. In this example, I have a bunch of different code files and a bunch of other data files here, which workflows might use. Now, maybe I want to be able to access these files and I can do that by using the API. Now, as you can see here in this example, I have five different example files. Now I can use the API to tell me what these files are, and then I can make an additional request to get the content of them. Let's have a look at that. Now, to begin with, I can do a simple get request here just to get the file directory, which will give me all the files in this specific namespace. And again, we're specifying that company.team one. And as you can see here, it's given me example.txt, example.js, and so on. And let's now do the same thing inside of Postman. And as we can see here in Postman, we've again got a list of all of these different files and we can see what file name they are, the size of them, uh, when they were modified and created. Now that we know these files, we can make an additional request now to be able to actually get the content of them. So let's use this example here to be able to get the content of example.txt and be able to get that from a request. So here we can simply just use the same path as before, but without the directories part. But now we're adding a query here with the file name, which is example.txt. And as you can see here, it just gives me the content inside, which is hello world. Let's look at this in Postman. And as you can see, we can demonstrate the same thing in Postman by simply adding a path query here and the name of the file. And I can easily modify this to be a different one. So let's do the JS one. We can see we've got the JS one there. I can also do the Python file. I can also do the ion file as well. And so here is just a really easy way of being able to fetch that data, especially if you need to access some of that files from an external system. Fetching the files is great, but reality is you probably wanna upload your files to Kestra so that you can then use them in your workflows. So let's have a look at an example where we can make a request to add a brand new Python file called API example directly to Kestra. So here I'm making a post request. Now this post request here is again using the namespace as part of the API. We're going to specify the namespace we want to add the file to and then we're saying files. Now because we're making a post request here uh, we want to be able to specify like we did for the get request the name of that file but because it's a post request it's expecting us to give it the file. Now, because we're giving it a file, we have to specify in the header that it's going to be form data. And then we have to add in here the file content, which will be a file. Now, as you can see here, I've done at api.py, which is a Python file that I have. Now that's on my system in my uh, desktop folder. So first of all, I'm going to need to go to that folder and then we'll go from there. So here is my API example, just a very simple requests one here that's going to just simply get the status code from the Kestra website. Now with that in mind, we should be able to make this request now and add that file to Kestra. And now when I refresh Kestra, we'll see the API example is now available for our workflows to use. And all we had to do was make a simple request. Now I'm gonna delete this file and I'm going to now go to Postman and add the same file in. For our body, we're gonna select form data here. And here I can delete the one from earlier. We're going to select a key, but specifically this key is gonna be a file. So let's give that file content like it wanted. And then we can select that file from our desktop. And as we can see here, it's all ready to go. Change the parameter here to be api underscore example dot py. I can now press send and we'll see that when I go back to Kestra, it has added that file in. So again, really useful for being able to add files in dynamically with your API to then be able to access them in your workflows. Hopefully you found that useful and you're gonna start using the Kestra API to extend Kestra even further to external systems. I'd love to know in the comments below how you're planning to use the Kestra API and how you're gonna integrate it to make Kestra more powerful. Remember to join our Slack community, which is in the description below and to give us a start on GitHub.